now, oh wait, whoop, I missed a whole slide. Um, as Ole mentioned before, we now have the ability to support non-8 kilohertz sampling rates in asterisk with the first ones that are supported be on beyond that being 16, although there's other stuff coming very soon, um, and can interoperate between them. The audio conferencing engine has not yet been upgraded to be able to mix at the highest sampling rate possible, but that's coming, uh, actually already being worked on. We now have the ability to provision phones from within asterisk, which seems like it doesn't make a lot of sense when you first think about it. But there's been a lot of work done, uh, was initially started by Mark and then others have taken it on, to actually be able to define users in asterisk and the devices that they are represented by. So it's possible now to actually feed provisioning information to an IP phone directly from the web server in asterisk. Another interesting thing, this was another um, community member who worked on this. Um, as much as we all agree, I suppose, at this point that the real-time interface in Asterisk is certainly not ideal, it does exist and lots of people know how to use it. It was originally only targeted at databases of some type. Actually, it was originally only targeted at databases that looked like SQL, um, although it's now been extended to do other things. One of those is LDAP, which personally I don't find all that interesting, but other people do. So they've used it to hook it up to Microsoft Active Directory for example, so that uh, someone managing a Windows network can go create a new user, create their email and their phone extension all at the same time and it just works. Nobody has to reconfigure asterisk at all. And the other really interesting thing is that we can now use live HTTP gets and posts and other things to get configuration information for asterisk. So it's possible to have asterisk not actually have any static configuration at all and derive all the information it needs by doing HTTP queries off of some web service that you've built and it can actually post data back to that as well when the, when the information about those changes. So. I talked about how we're going to be adding new functionality between releases now. That list of things, while there's lots of interesting things on there, isn't really a justification on its own to release a new version of Asterisk. If we hadn't, a new major version, if we hadn't decided to go down this new release policy, we probably wouldn't even be close to doing Asterisk 1.6 yet because there's just nothing groundbreaking there. There's nothing like, oh wow, I just have to have that. Lots of little interesting things or big interesting things, but nothing really huge. But because of that, that would have meant that none of that stuff that you just saw, many of which might have piqued somebody's interest in here, they wouldn't actually get to use for some unknown period of time until we decided to release the first version of Asterisk 1.6. Since we've decided to change that, this is what's already in the tree for 1.6.1 and that has not been branched yet. And some of these things um, are actually, have been brought in um, from SwitchFox. Mark mentioned earlier that we acquired a company called SwitchFox last year that makes packaged PBXs. Their PBXs are based on asterisk 1.2 with a whole lot of patches on it, something like 75 or 80 patches. Some of them are really tiny, some of them are really big. Um, interestingly, some of them are a new way to implement something that was already possible. They just never figured out that it was possible the other way, so they went off and wrote a patch to do it. So we've now started integrating some of the things that they had in SwitchFox. And the first one is has been very valuable to them. Uh, the open source and very, very good Speaks audio processing library has automatic gain control and denoising functionality. And sometimes when you're using crappy analog circuits like we have in the United States, which we've now determined that nobody in Germany uses, um, that's valuable because you just can't get rid of the noise that's on the analog circuit. It's there. You can't make it go away by retuning the, the changing the wiring or anything else, um, at least not the wiring that you're in control of. So it's now possible to filter that sort of thing out in asterisk and make the audio sound better. Um, Another interesting thing, which I don't know that I'd ever heard anybody ask about this until the patch showed up, is the fourth one on the list there. It's now possible to have somebody dial a number or come in over a PRI or SS7 or however it comes into your system and match a target in the dial plan, go off and run some logic and say, 
well, actually, because they chose that menu option, I actually need some more input. So I'm just going to go right back to the dial plan and wait for some more digits again, and then see what, where we're going to go from there. It has actually simplified some people's dial plans, because in the past, they would actually have to run an application to collect those digits and then figure out what to do with them and go to some other place in, the, in their logic. You now have the, the dial plan's built-in ability to branch to different places at your disposal. So that's um, another interesting thing. And then someone earlier today mentioned um, or asked about stereo support, which Ole mentioned is something that we know we're going to need to support. Um, this is another way that we're going to be driven to do that. Again, Russell, playing around with asterisk on his power book, decided that he wanted to be able to use some of the really cool plugins that are available for the Jack audio processing library, which is an open source audio processing system, to um, we'll say do creative things with phone calls. <laughs> um, mixing audio in very strange ways, applying very strange audio effects and things like that. But what that means, for example, is it's now, because there are extremely high quality audio interfaces available on PCs and there's really interesting plugins available for Jack, it's actually possible to do, when we have the appropriate wideband support, very high quality audio streaming through asterisk that's sourced from, say, a mixing board in a radio station or something along those lines, which was not really easily possible before. You had to have some kind of gateway to turn it into something asterisk could understand. Um, and then the last one that's there, actually, I think another slide though, is uh, another feature from. Um, Switchbox, uh, we started out with the ability to spy on other channels in Asterisk. And then somebody said, hey, it would be really great if I could just talk to one of the two people in there because maybe it's a call center and I need to be able to coach the agent that's taking the call a little bit. So I want to be able to whisper over the top of what they're saying, which a lot of PBXs have. And then somebody came along and said, well, actually, sometimes I just need the person who's spying to be able to just barge in and just it turns into a temporary three-way conference. Well, it's actually not a conference call because they can't speak directly back. But um, so those function, that functionality has been available in the spy application for a while. And the SwitchFox people said, well, if we're going to make this all available to people, they should be able to just switch on the fly. So now that's available when you're, on a, when you're spying on a call, you can actually push DTMF on your phone and switch between modes. Um, another thing that uh, many of our service provider partners will be happy to hear about once it gets out in the field more, is that it's now possible to register to a SIP service provider from inside Asterisk using a DNS host name and have that update when the provider decides to change where 